Hi guys, welcome back to another video. So we are at the training facility. We do not have team training today, so I came in to get some individual work, starting with a strength session. So I know quite a few of you have been asking for some strength exercises. So I'm gonna show you exactly what I do and the exercises that I include in my personal strength program. I do this twice a week during season, and then I have one plyometric session Per week during season so I showed that in my previous video if you're interested in checking that one out I'll leave a link on the screen right now but today is all about strength and then once we're done with the strength session we're gonna do an individual technical session as well not putting too much on the legs in that session because we're gonna be doing a lot in the strength workout so we'll just be going through some first touch work some distribution work just staying sharp on the board during these off days so before we head in as always I'm going to be taking kickoff so kickoff is something i've been taking throughout my season it's a football specific supplement designed by top nutritionists who work with high level clubs such as atletico madrid really good quality ingredients for example l-citrulline which is something that increases blood flow in the body and if you can increase your blood flow you're going to get more oxygen to the muscles which means you're going to improve your endurance so if you've got some really tough sessions coming up or you're training every day you can take a supplement like this and you're going to feel the benefits and you're going to be able to endure those intense sessions sessions at your peak for longer which means you're going to get more out of your performance so i'd really recommend kickoff i'm trying the lemon and lime flavor today i've also tried the blue raspberry and the original flavor both great ones i'll take a scoop about 30 minutes before i start training and i always feel energized focused and ready to go by the end of my warm-up so if you're interested in checking out kickoff for yourself i'm going to leave a link in the description box down below as well as my unique code which is exclusive to 7mlc viewers and you can get a huge discount discount off your order so i'd really recommend it it's used with some of the top players on the planet and you can add this to your daily routine and it's going to improve your performance so check them out i'll leave links in the description as well as my unique code but anyway we're going to get inside get warmed up and then we'll get into the strength session so I'm gonna walk you through my full strength session, starting with a warm-up. It's always important to warm up before any kind of activity, just to get some fresh oxygenated blood into all the muscles and also some blood flow into the joints. Really important to get those nice and loose, ready to go. You don't wanna be causing any injuries because of not warming up properly. So I start on the static bike for about five minutes. Then I do some backwards treadmill walking as well for about two to three minutes. This is a great way to get some blood flow into the knees. Of course, we're gonna be doing some squats and some movements that involve stress on the knees today, so it's important to get some blood flow in there. And then I just do about a five minute jog as well, just to ensure I'm as warm as can be before getting into some explosive strength movements. We're gonna be putting some weight on the body, so we need to make sure we're ready to go. Then for some extra activation, I like to work with the bands. This just really gets those hard to activate areas such as the glutes. As you can see here, activating the hamstrings as well. Then I'm also activating the hip flexors because we are gonna do some strength work on those today. So I wanna make sure they're also activated. Then just getting some mobility work in. So just getting some leg swings here, open up the hips and groins, and then some forwards backwards as well. This is great for loosening up the hamstrings. Then my final mobility is just some lunges and twists. This just really gets everything under tension. And then I move into my bulk of the strength session. So starting with some backwards walks. This is similar to the treadmill walking, but now we're just adding more resistance. You might have seen these exercises posted around the internet and how important they are for bulletproofing the knees. And I can't agree more. They really get some blood flow in there and strengthen all the muscles around the knees to take the pressure off. I've really found a lot of benefits from doing these backwards walks with the sled. You can increase the weight and the great thing about this exercise, you can put as much weight as you possibly can because you can't really overstress it because if you put too much weight in, the sled just won't move. So you can really load it up here and build some strength in your backwards walking. So after doing 15 yards there and back, I'll repeat that three times. Then I go into the gym I'm just getting a few leg extensions here just to get some activation in the quads. I'm working with a very light weight and working each leg individually just to make sure all the fibers are awake. And as you can see, doing the same thing here, but this time working the hamstrings. So I don't like to do a lot of my strength work on the machines, but just use them for a bit of activation. Then I like to work with the free weights. So going into some deep squats here, as you can see, I'm using a slant board. This allows my knees to go over the toes so you can really strengthen through that range of movement. 
in sports, in football, your knees are always going over the toes. So if you don't add some resistance in your strength program over the toes, you're just leaving yourself susceptible to knee injuries. So I do five reps and then I do three sets of the squats. As you can see here, the knees are really going over the toes, loading up the quads and hamstrings, being slow on my downwards phase, and then a little bit quicker and explosive with my upwards phase. So this is really gonna strengthen the glutes, quads, and hamstrings. Then after completing three sets of five squats with about a minute rest in between each set, I move into Nordic curls. And Nordic curls are by far the best exercise for strengthening your hamstrings. And they've actually been shown to significantly reduce the risk of an ACL tear as well. So I can't stress enough how important it is to incorporate Nordics into your weekly schedule. If you don't have a Nordic strap like I do, there's a way you can do this at home with a towel. You can kind of wedge it under the door. You can look up a YouTube tutorial on how to do that. But there's a lot of different ways you can achieve Nordic curls, but find some way to do it because you're gonna see a huge benefit from them. As a footballer, your hamstrings are taking a lot of stress, especially when you're sprinting. So making sure they're strong and less susceptible to injury is gonna keep you on the pitch longer. So for Nordics, I usually do three sets of five with a good two to three minutes rest between each because they are very intense. It took me a while to get to the stage where I can go down and up without my hands. So start where you need to, using your hands for assistance. Then I go into some calf raises. So I'm just doing 10 on each leg working each leg individually because you spend a lot of time on one leg as a footballer, you rarely spend time on two legs. And I'm holding a kettlebell, I think it was 35 pounds in my opposite hand, and then just using the bar there for some stability. And then I do three sets of 10 on each foot. The calves are really important as well to try and strengthen because that's a injury risk area as well for footballers. Now I'm going into some hip flexor flexions. So as you can see, driving my knee up, your hip flexor is a very underrated muscle group in terms of strengthening in the gym. I don't see enough footballers doing it, but your hip flexors take so much stress, especially with sprinting. So I'll leave a link in the description as well to the monkey foot, which I was using there to strengthen them. Then I went into some barbell shoulder raises. So as you can see, I'm lifting the bar above my head. Really important to strengthen your upper body as well as a footballer. A lot of your power is actually generated from your upper body. For these, I did three sets of five. Then I went into some pull-ups in which I did three sets of 10. The pull-up is an excellent movement for your upper body. It really improves your strength in your shoulders, your chest, your back, your lats. It's an almost an entire upper body workout. You really engage the core as well. So three sets of 10. And with the pull-ups, I like to pair them with push-ups. So in between each set of my pull-ups, I'm doing push-ups and I like to do 20 in a row. This is a good burn. Again, this time we're working the triceps, the chest, and it's a great core workout as well. You can do push-ups at home, 25 in the morning, 25 at night, 50 a day. You're gonna see a huge improvement in your strength and core stability. And then I do spend some isolated time on the core as well. The core is the center of your athletic performance, so it's important to keep it strong. If you have a weak core, essentially you're adding weakness to every movement you do, and that's how you get overuse injuries. So keeping that core strong is a non-negotiable. So for each of these exercises, I'm just doing 10 repetitions, going straight from one to the other. Then I do three rounds of this entire circuit. So I'm doing some leg raises now. You'll feel your hip flexors flexing as well for this one. So this will add a little bit of extra strength work to your hip flexors, which is never a bad thing. And then we finally go into some Russian twists. So we want to engage the obliques as well. You'll find your entire core will be burning after doing these three exercises consecutively. I'm working with a 16 pound ball there just to add some extra weight, but you can do this without also. And then after doing my core workout, I like to finish with some Copenhagen's. Copenhagen's are really important for strengthening up the groin area, which is a part of the body that footballers are especially susceptible to injuring. So I just hold this for 20 seconds on each side and repeat that three times. You can hold it for longer or shorter. So strengthening the inner thigh is really important. Don't overlook the Copenhagen. Definitely add this one into your weekly strength program. Then after completing 20 seconds on both sides and doing three rounds, I go into the technical. All right guys, so that's the strength session complete. Good work out there. As you can see, we're really covering the entire body 
in those exercises. They're all compound movements, which means it involves various muscle groups in one action, and that's more applicable to the game of football. You're always using multiple muscles in one action. So that's the workout that I typically do twice a week to help me with injury prevention. The reason it's so important is because when you're playing football and you're changing direction, as you plant after you've been running at high speed, you're putting multiple times your body weight into your joints. So you want to be able to protect those. And the way to do that is to lift more than just your body weight. So this resistance training loads up the muscles, protects the joints so that when you change direction, they're prepared to deal with that load because if they're not, your body's going to be weak in that area and your joint's gonna take the full load and that's how you can get injuries. So really important to do some kind of strength workout multiple times per week to make sure your body's prepared, especially if you're training every day. So that's a workout I'll typically do. I'm just gonna rest for 10 to 15 minutes. I'm gonna get a quick hit of protein, so I'm taking recover, and that's just gonna give me some protein, some carbs, and also some electrolytes, so that I can start that rebuild process, because when you do this kind of strength workout, you're tearing the muscles very slightly, so you want to repair those, and the way to do that is to get a good quality protein source. So I'm gonna rest here, recharge a little bit, then I'll warm myself up again, and then we're gonna get into the technical portion of today's session. So today is all about just basics, getting a lot of touches, first touch work. We're not trying to put too much on the legs. Just get a little bit of dribbling work, some first touch, and some distribution into some small targets. So it should be good.
All right guys, back home now and nothing really eventful happened since the training today. Just got home refueled with a four egg omelet and half an avocado. Then I had a protein berry smoothie that had a whole banana in it, mixed berries, vanilla protein powder mixed with collagen, whole milk and Greek yogurt. So plenty of protein and carbs right after an intense training session. Not so much the technical, but the strength training in particular, you want to be refueling in the right way, plenty of protein and carbs. And then I had loads of water as well. It's really important to hydrate because even in the strength session, you're getting rid of a lot of fluid, you're sweating. And then the technical session as well, you're gonna to continue to sweat. So replenishing all of those stores, this is really important, especially directly after the session. This is gonna help your body recover, refuel, rebuild so that you can actually get the most out of the training. You don't want to put in all that hard work then sell yourself short by not taking care of your nutrition. So a couple of tips for hydration as well. In my water I like to put either half a lemon or half a lime and then sprinkle in some sea salt or as an alternative you can just drink coconut water because not only do you need the water but you need the electrolytes and the sodium so that your body can store it as well really key for hydration. Hope you enjoyed both of those sessions. I know I did. And as always, let me know in the comment section down below if there's anything in particular you want to see from these day in the life episodes. And I'll try my best to include them in a future episode for you. So the plan for the rest of the evening is to finish editing this video, get a good foam roll and stretch to get out some of that soreness, have a good meal. So I'm gonna have some pasta, chicken and green vegetables, then a nice cup of tea before bed and get a good night's rest so we can get up and do it all over again tomorrow. So hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, make sure you smash the like button, hit that subscribe button for weekly training videos, and I will see you guys in my next video.